Real Life presents the Jack Hibbs Podcast with intention and boldness to proclaim truth, equip the saints, and impact our culture. Today, if this podcast lifts you up and encourages you to live a more fulfilled life in Christ, then make sure you leave us one of those five-star ratings. To us, that's like saying amen or yes. Then that rating will encourage others to listen. Now open your hearts to what God's Word has to say to you. Here is Jack Hibbs. Hey, I am blessed and privileged to be with Seth Gruber, the founder of the White Rose Resistance. You need to know what it's all about and you need to know what Seth has to say. I believe that he's the premier voice for the unborn child that's in America today, if not the world. And so Seth, I know this is unrehearsed. We're sitting down right now together, but um, just tell us about what's going on, some of the projects that you have lined up and really what's going on with your relationship to the church, with your vision, with yeah. the mission? Are you getting the love? Are you giving the help? Are you yeah. being taken care of? What's going on? Yeah, amen. Well, for, for those of you guys listening, uh, you guys, if you don't know this, you need to know this. Uh, P- Pastor Jack is himself an abortion survivor. Yeah. And uh, some people don't know that. Some people remember the Calvary Magazine you, interview you did years ago. Uh, we did an Instagram reel with your team on a, that we collaborated on together. And that reached a lot of people, and a lot of people were responding, saying, I didn't even know that about Pastor Jack's yeah. testimony and story. And by the way, guys, when we say abortion survivor, we don't mean like a, a woman who got an abortion and then got healed. Some people get confused. No, we're talking about like a baby yeah. who survived a failed abortion attempt on their life while in utero. That is That's correct. what we mean by the phrase abortion survivor. And so we've worked together on a Love Life California conference at this church before, Calvary Chapel Chino Hills, January 2022. And we had our friend Melissa Oden, who runs yeah. the Abortion Survivors Network. And and it's just, it's so profound to be with you, Jack, again, just thinking about the horror and trauma of having your life attacked before you've even seen the light of day, yeah. before you've even helped, felt the warmth of your mother's arms, yeah. that your life was being assaulted and attacked yeah. already. And like, and, and we've talked about this, and you've talked about this publicly. I'm not sharing anything that you haven't right. said, and you have, you had such incredible love and compassion for your mother. But like, to be attacked by those who were designed to protect you before you were even born, yeah, it's an incredibly traumatic and horrific thing to consider. And in an age and society that says believe survivors, mm. trust survivors, it's interesting how the culture does not have any patience for the stories of abortion survivors who are simply saying, if abortion was a woman's right issue, then where was my right? Exactly. Because right. most abortion survivors are women, yeah. strangely enough. Isn't that something? Where, where are their women's rights when they were, their mother was paying a hitman to try to kill them in utero? Yeah. And so I, I didn't answer your question at all, but like, it's just no, so it's, good to be with you again, brother, it's as, as probably the most outspoken pro-life pastor in the country but the fact that you survived a failed abortion attempt just provides so much credibility to your voice, brother. Well, I tell you what, what's amazing too, Seth, is the fact that uh, my, you know, when I, I, I was in junior high when I found that out. When you heard them talking about it, yeah. But it, I had to mature years later to find out several things. Number one, when I became a Christian, it all began to make sense for me. Yeah. Second thing is, having been an abortion survivor, that causes you to have what I believe is a little bit of more uh, boldness toward the call, toward the mission. Because in a you sense, think? yeah, I was already destined to death. Yeah. So I, I, I've gone through that. I, I wasn't supposed to live. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, you mentioned something about my mom, and the real issue was it was my father who put her through the demand yeah. that when he came back from Alaska that she was not to be pregnant with this child. And so she was the victim. Uh, I was a victim. And then, you know, if you think about it, my dad grew up in a non-Christian worldview uh, experience. So it just goes to show you that when God is interjected into the scenario, the healing radically takes place because the very son that was not supposed to be born wound up leading my mom and my dad to Christ. That's right. And so I'll see them later in heaven. But um, tell me what's going on. You've got an incredible platform and... uh, God is using you tremendously. How how is that being played out? Are your uh, speaking engagement engagements predominantly churches? Is it the public square? Yeah. Is it? Tell me, what is the day in the life of Seth Gruber and the White Rose Resistance? <laughs> well, thanks to, to you, Jack, uh, trusting a little twenty nine year old whippersnapper. 
<laughs> in October of 2020 to preach on a Sunday wow. morning. And I, had, I lost my stage fright, Pastor Jack, in about 2017 until I preached here October uh, wow. 2020 because I went from speaking in churches of 200, maybe 300 people to all three <sighs> services while you're defying Newsom and the state of California yep. fully open. And that was the morning that changed my life, actually, mm. um, was having spoke at Comeback California yeah. a month before. And then you had me at 29 years old. Uh, and then again, 14 months ago when I launched the White Rose Resistance, and I haven't looked back. And so thanks to you, actually more so than any other single individual in the country, Pastor Jack, the, the national response to the White Rose Resistance has just been such a God thing. And so it's right now, it is January. Uh, 2024. I'm pretty much booked out through June. I have almost no openings whatsoever. Um, we have three kids. Um, wow. We moved to Kansas to be closer to the in-laws yeah. because of all the traveling. Right. We're probably the fastest growing pro-life organization in the country right now. And what makes us a little more unique, um, because I, I, I'm not here to you know, talk down other organizations. We, we, we need lots of other organizations in the movement. What makes us unique is I think, w I'm trying to put myself out of a job. You, you, <laughs> see, you see, we actually don't need another 501c3 doing the work that the blood-bought bride of wow. Christ was called to do. Wow. And, and I, I mean, my mom was the director of a pregnancy resource center in the, in the late 1980s when she was in her late 20s in Azusa, California, uh, before she married my dad and had me as the firstborn. I grew up in the Walk for Life every year. I, 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 grew, I was raised in the pro-life movement. And yet I'm telling you and your audience right now, there are too many 501c3 nonprofit pro-life organizations doing the work, filling in the gap left open by the local church. The wow. pro-life movement did not begin in the 1970s, Jack. It began in the first century. Oh, that's right. The heritage of the church is that wherever the gospel is preached, social transformation follows. So, so when, the, when, you, when we have Prop 1, abortion through point of birth, funded by the public dole in the state of California, right. when they're firing our friend Jessica Tapia, who worships that's her because right. she says, I'm not going to use a minor's preferred pronoun and then lie to the parents and then let the dude go in the women's restroom because his inner transgender legion says he's actually a woman, and then she gets fired. If these are not signs of the times of the kind of culture of death we're living in, I don't know what is. It was the church that established righteousness. It was, it was the Judeo-Christian worldview that established the quote unquote blessings of liberty. So we now wait downstream to quote my pastor Rob McCoy, and we pick up human heartache that we helped create That's through right. our political apathy upstream. Yeah. Uh, lest we lost our 501c3 statuses by preaching the full counsel of God and pure and undefiled religion. Yeah. What we actually need is Christians learning how to be salty again. Yeah. And so you look That's back right. and you read the Old Testament and you see Gideon in Judges 6 hiding out in a cave like a little pansy, yeah. Pastor Jack. Yeah. And, then, and then the angel of the Lord comes to Gideon in Judges 6 and he says, mighty man of valor. <laughs> yeah. He reminds him of his identity, yeah, that's mighty right. man of valor. While he's hiding out in a cave like a little pansy because they had Bernie Sanders democratic socialism. That's right. Right? Because the Midianites so were taking all, taking all the wheat that they you grow thresh. It, we'll take it. You, you, you make, we take. That's it's socialism. It's democratic socialism, Jack, yes, which I've been told course. is much better. Right? I'm yeah. not sure how that works. I think it's if you vote your way in, you have to shoot your way out or something like that. So, <laughs> so he's hiding out in the cave threshing his own wheat. So he's a tax evader. That's right. Naughty, naughty Gideon. This is true. And, and then, and then what, in his conversation with the angel of the Lord, what happens? He, he cooks God a meal. The angel of the Lord lights it on fire. So he freaks out. He has like a Job moment. He's like, okay, I'm going to shut up now. Like, you're God. And then the, it says, and that same night, the, it says, God said, walk out of the cave. Go tear down the altars the, to Baal. The high places. And the Asherah poles. That's right. Chop up the Asherah poles and then use them to create to burn the sacrifice which unto is, me. Which is, pretty, <laughs> which is pretty awesome that God would have him go chop down both those uh, particular types of worship um, icons, one of them being the, um, how do we say it? One of them being a, a very tall pole <laughs> that uh, is- I see where you're going, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you believe this? This is in the Bible, people. Where, oh, you just sound like a conspiracy theorist. Yeah, I know, but yeah. in the Bible, God says, tear down those- uh, Astro poles. Yeah. Those astro poles, which were fertility poles, where yep. people would gather together and- uh, Orgies, they would, from the goddess of sex. Yeah. Truly orgies uh, to all of these various deities. And then uh, the, uh, the pregnancy that, that follows uh, then they just went down the road to Moloch. Yep. And they- As it was in Judges 6, so it is today. Sex ed is their sales funnel, abortion is their product, and your children are their prospects. You said that- yes, I'll say that again. Say that Sex ed again, is their slow. sales funnel, abortion is their product, and your children are their prospects. So let me unpack that. 
You got Ashra, goddess of sex, orgies. Oops, what happens when you do a lot of that? Yeah. Uh, unwanted pregnancies, unplanned pregnancies. That's okay, walk over to the other side of the camp to the Baal statues and pass your children yep. through the fire. Yep. God says you go tear down That's those right. two. What, what are the two pagan gods of our culture today? Sex, sex. and child sacrifice. That's right. Both in and outside well, the womb, by the way, because if they make it out alive, Planned Parenthood, who's not only the largest abortion provider in the world, Pastor yes. Jack, guess what? Ready for this? Your audience probably never heard this statement before. According to Planned Parenthood's own celebratory statements, they are the second largest provider of cross-sex hormones and puberty blockers in the land of the free and the home of the brave. Planned Parenthood, y'all, let me say that again because you think I'm joking you right now. Planned Parenthood, the largest abortion provider in the world, is as of 2023, last year, the second largest provider of cross-sex hormones and puberty blockers in the land of the free and the home of the brave. It's their fastest growing revenue stream right now in January of 2024. Planned Parenthood's fastest growing revenue stream is not killing babies in the womb. It's selling cross-sex hormones and puberty blockers, by the way, creating permanent clients who will then need those drugs forever, especially if they go the full route with, uh, with surgical castration mm -hmm. and surgical intervention. They will need drugs for the rest of their life. That's a permanent client, just like Big Pharma can Absolutely. create. That's the same organization, Planned Parenthood. That's exactly, and that's brilliant. They are the largest provider of comprehensive sexuality education in America's public schools, which, yes, is that pornographic, They've got to preach horrifically it. inappropriate, Absolutely. lewd. Remember when Attorney General Merrick Garland of course. said um, after that brother in Pastor Gary Hamrick's district that's right. in, in Loudoun County, yep. Virginia, by the way, him and his family got saved. They attend yes. Cornerstone yes. Chapel that's right. now. That's he was right. at that school board meeting. That's right. And yeah, did he curse and get probably a little bit carried away? Yeah. You want to know why, audience? Because his daughter had been raped yeah. in a public high school bathroom in Loudoun County, Virginia. Why? Because the school board in Loudoun County, School's Virginia responsible. said that boys could go into the girls' That's bathroom right. if they identified as a woman inside. So a dude who said he was a woman raped this father's daughter. The school board covered it up because it was their own policy. They transferred him to another school and he did it again to another girl. So the dad who, yeah, got a little yeah, angry because those school his board members should not was raped. Yep. And he gets a little carried away Imagine. at the school board meeting. He gets arrested, and what happened the next week? Attorney General of the United States of America, Merrick Garland, Garland, says, I'm opening up an investigation into domestic terrorism of parents speaking at school board meetings. That's right. But all of that kind of curriculum, all the kind of ideas that are leading to school boards hiding the gender identity of minor students from their parents, it's all called comprehensive sexuality right. education, CSE. And I'm gonna, and there's some stuff if you're listening to this podcast right now, you can go to our Happening Now conversation yeah, the happening now from we January did. 10th, That's 2024. Right. That's right. And I reveal some extremely horrific, That's right. shocking, demonic history behind how not just Planned Parenthood, behind not just the legacy of Planned Parenthood, but how Planned Parenthood created comprehensive sexuality education. All the lewd porn stuff in the yeah. schools. Sometimes it's during sex or health week. Sometimes it's in the school library, but sometimes it's, it's actually in the required sex right. ed week at public high schools. Planned Parenthood, Jack, wins 80%, 80% of the public funds mm. for grants to go put that horrific sex ed that they wrote, and then they go get the grants it's to go put their own curriculum into the schools. Yep. So what, what am I trying to say? Well, let me try to circle the barn here because I'm getting a little carried away. That's all right. Asherah and Baal. That's right. Sexual liberation is political control. If you sexualize a community, especially the young minds of innocent children who aren't aware of what's happening to them, and they will eventually kill their children. Here's the final statement. Child sacrifice has always been the conclusion of sexual liberation, as it was in Judges 6, yep. so it is today. And all of that sprinkled, dusted, with a religious uh, pixie dust, so to speak, of knowingly or unknowingly, this is to pagan deities, which we know as demons. Yep. Demonic activity, its head has arisen again, yep. and America is falling headlong forward. Um, 
So we're we're revealing and exposing all of this. You guys our are new, our new film. You're blowing it at up. the White Rose Resistance, speaking in churches, and you know we're not to the point where we where we need to be yet, Jack. And I'm sure you would agree where the, the the pulpits are ablaze with righteousness in America again, and we have social transformation, and godly men and women are running and getting elected and transforming school districts and and overturning laws and and restoring protections for marriage. Do you and think family that will children. ever happen? I, I I believe by God's grace, if 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 the people of God be begin to care more about truth and righteousness and what their that's father the, thinks about the them big than their own reputation and 501c3 statuses and being invited to write op-eds in the New York Times and the Washington Post. If we walk away that's from it. the legacy that's been built by big evangelicalism, that's yes, right. I just used that phrase in a sentence, not big pharma, big Eva, big evangelicalism, those who want a place at the table. They care more about having their back rubbed by people at the World Economic Forum and the other sort of theological betters that's that right. write for the Gospel Coalition who have done nothing, nothing. to save preborn children, to stand up against the sexualization of children, and our new film, The 1916 Project, which comes out in 2024, later this year, is going to blow the top off of what I call the hidden history of the secular moral revolution. The architects yeah. of the culture of death. Shoot through a few of those things sure. just to get people fired up about it. So for people listening, Pastor Jack, they're probably like, well, this guy's kind of weird. I thought Jack said he was a pro-life speaker. Why is he spouting off on all this other stuff? Why? Because all human conflict is ultimately theological. That's right. That's why. You can't like carve out a lane in the culture wars and say, well, I'm a pro-life speaker. I just want to say babies. Well, praise God, I do too. Yeah. But you can't, you can't um, rip the abortion movement out of the cultural fabric of the culture wars and say, I just deal with this issue. Mm. This is what something Francis Schaeffer talked about. He yeah. said that like we tend to deal in, in bits and pieces with ideology yeah. rather than seeing uh, the, the, the Christian thing. manifesto, yeah, right? how right. then shall we live, rather than seeing like how the whole thing all goes together. That's right. Uh, and by the way, have you guys noticed this about the left? It, it's not like that with them. The, the, the religion of leftism, humanism, uh, secular progressivism, mm. uh, whatever you want to call it, th they seemingly have a robust religion right. enough that, that speaks to all the issues of the day within their religious framework. Meaning, meaning the, the lenses of leftism, there's a new phrase I just coined, uh, provide more pagan clarity to the culture wars for their congregants and deacons in the church of humanism, then apparently the pure and undefiled religion can provide for uh, the blood-bought bride of Christ to reach that same level of political and spiritual clarity according to the Christian worldview. What do I mean by this? Here's an example of this. Have you guys noticed how the left always sort of coalesces together Absolutely. anytime one of their core pagan sacraments is compromised? Right. And the left doesn't agree about everything, Jack. No. But if it comes to transing kids, yep. sexualizing them, killing them in the womb, parental rights, Undivided. Um, transgenderism, men competing against women. They're, they'll, they'll literally say things like, there's no proof that men have a, a physical advantage over women. It's like, dude, wow, secular humanism really rots the brain. But like anytime one of those core sacraments gets compromised, what do the, what do unite. The, 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 the deacons in the religion of humanism do? Absolutely. They unite and they set aside any other sort of um, you know, peripheral political disagreement right. to unite on those core things. And their religion, their ideology, whatever you want to call it, it is robust enough for them to get in lockstep. That's right. But we bicker and we argue in Christendom That's right. and we go, well, that Jack Hibbs though, I mean, isn't he just a, a, a political activist? Hasn't he prostituted his great commission duties to the GOP so he can be invited to speak at Republican events? That Jack, I don't trust that Jack Hibbs. It, 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 really, is Christianity big enough to be able to provide clarity to issues of abortion? What about socialism? Right. I thought the early church, didn't right. they share and have everything in common? Isn't that socialism? <laughs> and we bicker and we argue about these issues that actually the Bible and our historic Christian faith speak to very loudly and very clearly. Absolutely. But we seemingly can't see that. Yep, right, absolutely. why? And I'm convinced it's because we care more about our reputation, That's right. our 501c3 status, and what the Washington Post says about us than what God thinks about us. I gotta tell you, I had an interesting revelation. I should have known this, but I didn't. I had the honor of being at a, at a meeting, and uh, sitting next to me um, is a, a nationally renowned attorney. Uh, I'm not gonna mention his name, because maybe I shouldn't, but he's, he is uh, the guy. And um, we were talking, and he said, because his, his specialty is constitutional law, yep. and I didn't realize this. He said that a church in the United States does not have to apply for a 501c3. That's right. Did you know that? They are de facto. It never even dawned on de me. De facto, they're a 501c3. De facto, a church doesn't have to have a 501c3. It's already yep. exempt 
based on our constitution and our founding fathers. Yeah. And when the IRS a few years ago said that all churches need to register to be a 501c3, yeah, they don't. Several, including one of my one of my other pastor heroes, uh, Scott Craig in um, in uh, South Dakota. Um, him and a bunch of other pastors yeah. got together and said, you know what, we're actually not even gonna register for that because yeah. we don't have to because what you're saying is illegal. Yeah, that's not, right. You can't require churches to register as a 501 It's group. amazing. But it's, 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 it's here's the mammon. But see, right? Exactly. Here, 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 here. That's just right. Just give us the children. Just give us the babies. Right. Here, here, just, just, just stay quiet. Absolutely. You know? So listen, you guys, obviously, this has been the fastest 25 minutes uh, <laughs> ever. And so, um, yeah, the, the time that Seth and I are bringing this uh, podcast to you right now, uh, we recently did what we call happening now. It's 90 minutes of nonstop this and that. And um, January 10th, I believe, was the, yeah. was the day. You can look that up by going to jackhibbs.com. Jackhibbs.com, it's there, happening now. You're going to want to see all of it in its full entirety, 90 minutes. But please keep him in prayer. The, the time that he could take to tell us the things that they have to go through, the things that they have to deal with is absolutely ridiculous because I, I promise you this, the, the, those with other worldviews don't have to go through uh, the <laughs> hoops right. that, uh, that Seth and his team's having to go through. You and I are living in a time of profound deception, brothers and sisters, and we need to know the truth, but it's not enough to know it. We've got to do it. In fact, it's worse to know it mm. and not do it yep. than to know it and to just play with it or to take yeah. it as some sort of a toy. Yeah. Everything that we learn from God and from his word, now we're responsible to do it. Amen. And so that's why no area of life is off limits to that's the right. Christian and to that salt and light influence. Listen, as always <laughs> uh, here at Real Life, we believe that it's time for us to live out what we believe in, it's time for real life. Hmm. And we're grateful, Seth, for you and you your sound ministry. like Abraham Kuyper right now. And the, that's an honor, wow. <laughs> and the White Rose Resistance people, find out all about it. Find out all about it. Seth Gruber's doing a great work. Get behind him and support him. Yeah, you can go to the whiterose.life, learn all about what we're doing. If Perfect. you wanna know why Planned Parenthood's founding board member was called the spiritual father of Nazi Germany, and is the only American to have had a one-on-one -on -one meeting with Adolf Hitler after he yes. rose to power. Yes, I said that, the founding board member of Planned Parenthood. Do you wanna know how that happened and more? Go to The Happening Now, 90-minute <laughs> conversation, hear the hidden history of the secular moral revolution, the architects of the culture of death, Planned Parenthood, the largest, best funded, and most profitable 501c3 in American history, and watch our trailer of the film that is going to reawaken the blood yes, of will. Christ in America and expose the deeds of darkness, Ephesians 5.11. It's called The 1916 Project. We have not publicly released the trailer yet. Ugh. You can only watch the trailer to The 1916 Project by going and watching the Happening Now conversation. So and good. And watching us premiere it for the first time publicly on January 10th, 2024 at Calvary Chapel, Chino Hill. So good. God bless you, brother. Bless you. Love it. This Jack Hibbs podcast, as well as all the broadcast outreach opportunities, are listener supported. Will you consider partnering with us through a special gift? Go to jackhibbs.com to learn more and stay connected.